But first, we begin in South Africa, where former President Jacob Zuma has been released from prison due to a remission of non-violent offenders, a move approved by President Sera Maposa and Justice Minister Ronald Lamola. Former President Zuma had initially been ordered to return to jail after being sentenced to 15 months for contempt of court, but it was released just over an hour later under a remission process aimed at reducing prison overcrowding. This decision has packed controversy with the opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, expressing outrage and alleging that it aims to shield former President Zuma from accountability. Now, joining me live for this discussion is Dr. Sebastian Peterson, is a former Deputy Director of the Department of Correctional Services, and also Herman Berhan Obermichael, a political analyst. They both join live from Cape Town and South Africa. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on the conversation. Thanks for having me. Now, I'd like to start with Herman Ogbamaiko. What's your assessment of the recent decision to release former South African President Jacob Zuma on the remission process and its potential implications for the country's political and legal landscape? In terms of legality, uh, Section 84, uh, Article 2 of the South African Constitution empowers the president uh, to remit uh, some prisoners, actually which fall under certain categories. The categories are non-offenders. So uh, legally, then uh, the president has the constitution to back him up, even though the uh, constitutional court uh, wanted President Zuma to return to prison uh, on several occasions, including the appeals court. Uh, uh, politically, uh, if you remember, when Zuma was, Zuma was uh, President Zuma was uh, sentenced to uh, prison, uh, there were uh, so much protests in KwaZulu Natal, which claimed 354 people uh, died uh, in the protests. So politically, also, uh, those are the implications. Again, the, uh, there was uh, overcrowding in the prison, 143% overcrowded. And uh, due to that, actually, recently in one of the Limpopo facility, there was fire, fire that broke out, and there are about 3,024 prisoners that actually uh, need to be uh, uh, taken to other prisons. So uh, legally and uh, politically, uh, there is uh, some significance. Also, next year, it's election. So uh, maybe uh, President Ramaphosa needs also to some sort of uh, get some sort of support, especially in the KwaZulu Natal province. So those are the, the implications, uh, both legally and politically. Thank you, Herman. Uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa uh, trying to score some uh, political points there, according to you, as next year is an election uh, year. Uh, now, Dr. Peterson, President Cyril Ramaphosa's approval of the remission of non-violent offenders, including former President Jacob Zuma has sparked debates about accountability. Now, as a former deputy director at the South African Prison Services, uh, do you, uh, South African uh, Correctional Services, I beg your pardon, can you assess the balance between addressing prison overcrowding and ensuring political figures are held accountable for their actions? Hello, Dr. Peterson, are you there? Okay, I guess uh, we have some connection issues uh, with Dr. Peterson. I'll just direct that question to Herman uh, while we try to sort out our connection with Dr. Peterson. Now, um, there's the issue of uh, Herman, there's the issue of overcrowding, and there's also the issue of accountability. So, how best uh, would you advise the South African government to ensure a sort of balance and not just giving uh, political figures a get-out-of-jail-free card uh, with the excuse of a prison overcrowding? Well, 9,488 prisoners for, uh, under the 
categories of non-offenders. So as I have said, uh, the president, based on the Section 84 of the Constitution, has the mandate, has the power to actually pardon or reprieve uh, prisoners who are non-offenders. And uh, former president uh, Jacob Zuma became one of the beneficiaries uh, in this rem uh, 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 remission process. Uh, remember also there are prisoners who don't fall under such categories, especially those who have a serious crime such as uh, related to sexual or uh, firearms or drug dealers or any other, other uh, serious crimes. So, um, President, uh, former President Zuma um, remission process uh, is uh, just a direct, uh, a direct beneficiary of such uh, yeah. remission uh, process. Like you said earlier, Herman, uh, he has not broken any law. It's uh, the president acted within his prerogative, and there's also a genuine and valid case of uh, prison overcrowding in South Africa. Let me try and bring back uh, Dr. Peterson into the conversation. Uh, Dr. Peterson, are you there? I can hear you, yes, but very um, it's okay. breaking up a bit, the sound. Uh, great, to, great to have you on the program. I would like to know your assessment of uh, the last few days, the event of the last few days, the release of former President Jacob Zuma and questions around accountability and also uh, overcrowding in prison. What's your take on this? All right. Good, uh, good uh, evening, uh, everybody. So my take on this is that South Africa has been, um, you know, we've, we've come through a, 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 a long um, uh, time of, of trying to reconcile with what has happened in, uh, in this 30 years. And I think when what we what the government has been doing and what Sarah Ramaphosa has been doing is basically um, he was doing the right thing because we need to understand that Jacob Zuma, a fighter that has, has worked hard for South Africa for what we have, the democracy that we work for. And I think um, to basically put uh, Jacob Zuma on parole and even uh, uh, um, to actually um, just release him on, on, on parole for this. It's the right thing that the president has done. Um, South Africa has been struggling for still with uh, with the minority that has been trying to demonize uh, uh, President Jacob Zuma, um, and have also been trying to to do what they've been doing with him since 2004 when he was MEC still, and that in that time. And I think, in fact, with what has been happening uh, in South Africa with him is that. They've been trying to to basically pin some stuff on President Zuma. The fact that he went to, to prison for basically not wanting to speak out was was already the wrong thing that they've done. And I think um, uh, it was the right thing for Sir Ramaphosa to do what he did. Okay, thank you, Dr. Peterson. Uh, Herman, Dr. Peterson feels, you know, the president acted in good faith and it was the right thing for him to do. But not everyone in South Africa uh, thinks so. The release of Jacob Zuma has triggered criticism, uh, particularly from the opposition Democratic Alliance. The DA argues that his release undermines accountability. How might this situation highlight deeper challenges within the South African political landscape and what implications might it have for future governance? Are you, uh, do, do, what, what type of sentiments, uh, do, do you share the same sentiments uh, with the Democratic Alliance or you think they're just playing politics? Um, actually, uh uh, uh, the uh, former national uh, commissioner of the uh, correctional services uh, gave a parole uh, to uh, President Zuma based on the, uh, you know, medical parole, as I have said. Actually, you only qualify for a parole after spending three months. But as I have said, uh, politically, it sparked a heavy protest and it, it, it claims uh, Over 300 so 350, as I have said. And 
you know, there should be a political balance somewhere, somehow. And remember also, uh, former President Jacob Zuma complied also in going to prison. Uh, so there is some sort of uh, compliance from his side, from uh, what uh, I understand. So uh, the opposition usually is an opposition, you know, and uh, of course also, uh, I mean, uh, President J Jacob Zuma is uh, from the ANC camp. So you would usually expect uh, some sort of uh, resistance uh, from any opposition that you may think. So it's quite uh, a normal reaction from the A. From the opposition camp, you don't uh, you don't expect them to agree uh, with all decisions made by the ruling government, the African National Congress. Now, back to you, Dr. Peterson. Considering the complex intersection of legal proceedings and political dynamics, how might Jacob Zuma's release impact the ongoing efforts uh, to combat corruption and restore public trust uh, within the African National Congress? Because uh, Jacob. Uh, Justice uh, Raymond Zondo a short while ago did accuse uh, Parliament of not acting on the Zondo report uh, and not doing something about its recommendations. Uh, there's also the big issue of trust uh, and uh, state capture uh, in South Africa. So with this uh, issue of the release of former President uh, Jacob Zuma, how might it impact uh, ongoing uh, considerations on balancing uh, justice and also the battle against corruption? Uh, let, let me say this. Um, you know what happened when, when they first um, accused, uh, or, or when they arrested uh, President Jacob Zuma, um, uh, I mean, uh, 350 people literally um, died last year in July. And it, can you hear me? Yes, uh, Dr. Peterson, go ahead, please. All right. So, so last year in July, there was a huge uh, debate about the whole thing about when they when they prosecuted uh, President Jacob Zuma, and you know um, the unrest that happened. So the thing is this: is that even though a lot of people think that uh, Jacob Zuma don't have a a um, a political stance still in South Africa, he still have a a huge popularity in South Africa. The second thing is, is that, and I heard uh, just a little bit of what, what uh, my other leader was saying, um, you know, in the country, the Democratic Alliance has always been trying to demonize um, President Jacob Zuma. Um, and in fact, with the Zondo Commission and everything that happened, um, when President Jacob Zuma said he's not going to speak out or he doesn't want to testify at the commission, um, it is the first time that I've ever heard a commission um, literally arresting a, a president for not wanting to speak out. And that, for me, in itself, was wrong. Mm. Um, when it comes to the, to the stability of our country and the stability, and do they still trust um, the ANC? In fact, they don't trust the ANC, not because of Jacob Zuma, but they don't trust the ANC because of other stuff that's been happening in our country. Um, and it's not only about the Jacob Zuma, but it's literally about the fact that the ANC needs to um, to rectify itself in all other things that, that they've been doing. Um, but it's never been about a Jacob Zuma in itself. Um, and I think, for me personally, the whole issue about sending uh, Jacob Zuma to prison, the man is 80 plus years old. And um, it's not, I mean, what is it that you're going to get out of Zuma if to, to, to send him to prison? Because even after the Zondo Commission, and even after they have uh, given uh, Sir Ramaphosa the, the documents, up until the day, nothing has happened. And no one has ever been arrested for anything. And there's been so many names that has been um, put out there mm. of ministers, of um, uh, comrades, of those people that were implicated in a lot of... Um, uh, and even, not only about ANC, but even in other political parties that has benefited from, from corruption. So it's not only an ANC thing, or it's not only a Zuma thing. And I think that is where everyone is, is mistaking themselves, that they're literally demonizing one man, called, uh, Jacob Zuma, sending him to prison, 
because he did not want to testify um, at the Zonda Commission. Because yeah. he said the, the Zonda Commission is not, um, they, uh, they, they, will, they literally came to accuse him of something that he did not do. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sebastian. Uh, now back to you, Herman. Uh, South Africa is going to the polls next year to elect a new president. And uh, with national elections in the horizon, what are the political ramifications of former President Zuma's release uh, for the African National Congress's electoral fortunes? How could it impact the party's ability to respond to public demands for change and transparency? Well, uh, uh, politically, uh, in terms of election, I can uh, forecast that, uh, you know, there was some sort of uh, negative perception, especially in the KwaZulu Natal, especially from Zuma supporters uh, against President Ramaphosa to some extent, and some sort of fallout from the ANC. Uh, so uh, there will be some uh, good prospects in terms of uh, creating, you know, it's a shift in terms of perception about mm -hmm. uh, uh, the ANC in general and President Ramaphosa uh, specifically. So this, uh, for me, it's not only uh, because of the constitutional uh, mandate, Section 84, that empowers the president actually for uh, to pardon the former president, Jacob Zuma. But it has also some political ramifications in terms of uh, getting more votes next year, especially from the KZM province. Thank you, Herman. Now, uh, Dr. Peterson, beyond the legal and political aspects, how might the release of Jacob Zuma resonate with ANC supporters who still view him as an anti-apartheid icon how could this emotional connection influence the ANC's internal cohesion and broader messaging? Because before now, uh, it's, there's been an open war uh, between uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, and the current president, Sir Ramaphosa. Uh, will this uh, help in any way to smoothen things out so that uh, the ANC go to polls next year on a united front? Hello, are you there, uh, Dr. Peterson? Okay, uh, apologies, I think uh, we lost connection uh, with Dr. Peterson. So I'll just direct that question uh, to Herman. Uh, Herman, I said beyond the legal and political aspects, uh, what, how might the release of Jacob Zuma uh, resonate with ANC supporters who still see him as an anti-apartheid hero? And how could this emotional connection uh, influence the ANC's internal cohesion and broader messaging, and also the fact that it's a change in direction uh, between the current president ANC uh, of the current president Siram Poposa and the former uh, president uh, Jacob Zuma, who didn't see eye to eye uh, before this. Uh, well, uh, from what I can clearly see. Um you know, he, uh, President, former President Jacob Zuma has massive support also within the ANC current structure. Uh, so uh, if you see also in the selection of uh, ministers, uh, was it la last year or this year, uh, you know, some of the ministers were pro-Zuma to some extent, which actually uh, were actually uh, uh, taken out of uh, their position. And uh, so what, I'm, what I can clearly see is uh, there will be some sort of uh, what you call, uh, uh, if I can call it happiness from uh, Zuma's camps within the ANC structure. Uh, so uh, this uh, pardoning of the president uh, uh, from this uh, uh, remission process would clearly boost the uh, confidence of some of the members of the ANC and some of the uh, leadership in the ANC as well. So uh, it's, you, you think it's a plus? Uh, it's, 
It's a plus for the ANC. I beg your pardon? Is it a plus for the ANC as we inch towards well, the election? It's, it's a plus. Yeah, I think the president, uh, you know, the, uh, President Ramaphosa has done this uh, deliberately uh, because he knows that uh, mm. there will be a positive effect. shift yes. uh, effect uh, 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 as a result of this remission process. Now, Herman, away from the African National Congress, let's talk about the opposition uh, Democratic Alliance. The critique of this move uh, suggests that Zuma's release could establish a precedence of leniency for senior ANC members. Uh, there's already established criticism of cronyism and uh, corruption and cover-ups among the uh, senior ANC cadre. In your view, how might this perception shape public attitudes towards political elites and their accountability for alleged wrongdoing? Well, every individual uh, should be treated, uh, uh, you know, on their Merit. uh, individual merits. So um, there is always, uh, you know, politically can defend this, you know, can say that uh, former President Jacob Zuma is not, uh, he should also be tre treated like all other citizens. If the other nine, over 9,000 could be uh, beneficiary of the remission process, then clearly the ANC or President Ramaphosa can defend this remission process as, uh, you know, Jacob Zuma getting uh, also uh, what other citizens are getting. So, but uh, of course, some people in the opposition camp will uh, be frustrated, uh, even also some citizens, because uh, Clearly, you know, the focus will be not on the other prisoners, prisoners uh, that uh, actually benefited from this remission process, but people will focus on uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, because, mm. you know, clearly that stands out. But always, uh, you know, the president Ramaphosa can uh, defend this process based on clemency given to any other citizen is given to President, former President Jacob Zuma as well. Now, Herman, as we begin to wrap up our conversation, uh, former President Jacob Zuma's release has brought attention to the tension between the ANC's historical legacy as an anti-apartheid movement and its current struggles with corruption. How might this situation prompt the ANC to reconcile these conflicting narratives and redefine its image to the electorate uh, before the 2024 elections? Is there still time? Because uh, if you look at the historical records, the last uh, three cycles of elections, uh, the ANC is slowly uh, losing its majority and there's a whole generation of young South Africans uh, that are not happy uh, with the ANC and, uh, and uh, the opposition parties, the DA and the EFF, uh, seems to be gaining ground in traditionally uh, ANC uh, battlegrounds. This is another challenge that the ANC will, uh, is facing currently, especially also with the uh, remission given to, to the former president, Jacob Zuma. Uh, people have a mixture of feelings. Some will say that why is somebody corrupt, somebody uh, accused of cronism, uh, you know, being released. Uh, but some others also, you know, there are Zuma supporters who will also believe that the president has done the right thing. So uh, there will be both sides of the story, you know. From the supporters, it's, there will be a positive effect but from those non-supporters of mm -hmm. course there will be some negative I mean, uh, implications that is where some sort of public relations work to be done okay. uh, in terms of trying to uh, you know uh, trying to convince those non-supporters that what has been done is the right thing to do 
Thank you very much, Herman. A story of this magnitude is definitely bound to uh, elicit a reaction from all uh, quarters. I'd like to say thank you to our distinguished guest, Dr. Sebastian Peterson, uh, former Deputy Director at the Department of Correctional Services, and also Herman Behan Ogbemaiko, political analyst, uh, joining uh, from Cape Town, uh, South Africa. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your uh, insights and your contribution to the subject. Thanks for having me. Thank you. This is The Conversation in New Central Television. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll switch gears to situations in Niger, where the coup leaders have agreed to dialogue with ECOWAS. I'll bring in our guest, and we'll get straight into our discussion after this quick timeout. Stay with us.